Hi, this is Tim. It can be difficult to transition from RS Logic 5 and RS Logic 500's native tag addressing, such as N7 colon 0, to Studio 5000 and RS Logic 5000's native tag addressing. Let's see if we can sort that out. Note this is an excerpt from a live stream, so it is not perfect. One of the struggles with converting from RS Logic 500 to Studio 5000 is, yeah, trying to find these. And honestly, I think Rockwell made, well, and again, you know, it's all about time. This was all designed in the 80s. But people look at this B3 slash zero and they're like, yeah, here's my bits. Let's open up B3 and then let's open up N7. These look tremendously different right here. Because, yeah, we have B3 zero. We have 16 bits, zero through 15. We have N7 here, and we only have one value. But one thing while you're in there, and this would be good to do, Daryl, is open up Studio 5000, and notice we have a radix here. This is what we call in, well, know, let's go over Studio 5000 and look. Make sure I get this right. Uh, this is what we call the style in Studio 5000. But this is, I call it the view. So right now, B3, it defaults to a binary view. An N7 defaults to a decimal view. Switch the radix on an N7 to binary. And you're going to see, in fact, let's just, can I skinny this up? Well, here, I can stomp that right over top of that. Now these things line up perfectly. So at B3 colon 0, now I didn't say slash 0, B3 colon 0 is a 16-bit integer. A, a N7 colon 0 is also a 16-bit integer. Now, I guess to help people understand, maybe, maybe to el eliminate anybody having to understand bullying, bullying, bullying. Um, <laughs> man, it's time for a drink. Hold on. <laughs> so... To keep people from having to understand bits and integers and booleans and all those things, they made this B3 and N7. They're actually identical. They are the same things. So if we, in fact, now, you know, before, let me switch this back just so we don't get confused. When we clicked on this, this was N7 colon 0. And, you know, I'm going to click on this one. This is B3 colon 0 slash 0. And what that means is B3 B3 colon 0, which is an integer, and I want bit 0 of it. And we don't have that option down here, but when we switch that radix, notice we got that slash 0 now. So this is how you specify which bit in an integer you want. That's what that slash means. But okay, now we kind of have a handle on, okay, that apparently a B3 and an N7 are kind of the same thing. Well, what are they in Studio 5000? So we'll go over here and actually, yeah, let's just do all this right in our controller tags. Why not? Oops, I got to focus. There we go. Let's right click the controller tags and we're going to create a new tag. And so this one, I'm just going to call my int. I just, one thing I'll tell you that I really cringe over, don't create a tag that is called n7. Like, Daryl, please don't do that. Or B3. That is not a Studio 5000 tag. I mean, and I'm saying my int just because we're talking about int. But, I mean, this should be the, I don't know, the, the set point of something. I and mean, make these tags as descriptive as possible. But, all right, we're going to create my int. And then the data type here, we're going to make it an int. So, I'm just going to make that an int. And we're going to create it. And let me close these back up. All right, and now we have my int. So this is an integer tag. The same, and then here's where it, I think people get stumped. This is an integer tag, the same as n colon zero is an integer tag, or b three colon zero is an integer tag. And so we go over here. If we were trying to, you know, switch some native thing over. Then if I go and I want to address something in my program, and I'm going to bring down another wrong. And yeah, let's just do the exact same thing we've been doing. So we're just going to bring that. We're going to 
those. Yeah, but I'm just gonna make this output three. Why not? So we can see that, yeah, you don't, inputs don't have to um, control inputs. You can actually have internal things, control inputs, outputs, all that. But okay, now we have my int. So I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna go find my int. Now remember, when you click on something and you see one of these error boxes, that means you can click on it and get more info. Here are those 16 bits, the same as you had these 16 bits under B3, or if our radix and binary on N7, we had through here. So B3 colon zero would be my int, oops, lost my focus, my int dot zero. So this is the bit tag of that. Now, typically I would not do this unless um, we were manipulating that as an integer because we also have Boolean tags. And so we're gonna go back to the controller tags. And this time, just so we can do it a different way, we're gonna go to edit tags. And this time I'm gonna make my bool. And then for our data type, we are gonna have a bool. All right, so now let's go back to monitor and let's just focus on these two for a little bit. So my bool's value right now is zero. My int's value is zero. And I can make my bool a one. I can also make my int a one. And now's where they start to vary is, okay, I put a two into my bool. It's gonna say invalid or value string invalid. And what that means is I've gone out of the range that I can put into my bool because they can only be ones and zeros. Whereas my int, it'll take a two, it'll take a 20, it'll take a 200, It'll take a 2,000, it'll take a 20,000, but okay, one, two, three, four, five, it will not take 200,000. See here, now it says value string, or value string invalid again. And that's because this value that I'm trying to enter is way too large. So let's see if we can understand a little bit about what's going on here. I'm gonna escape out of that. So now we have crazy, let's, let's go back to zero on this, just so we can see. And then notice we have an arrow. And boy, if you ever go to a class, everybody's like, if you have an arrow, what do you do? Click it. <laughs> yeah, so inside here, we have 15 bits, just like we had in RS Logics 500. And so now let me make the value of this one. And you see, we're going to have a one there. And then you know, let's see, what did I do after that? I did two. Oops, well, there's 22. We don't, we don't want to go there. Well, Mainly as we change these, see how they're actually filling these in with different numbers? Oops, I went too high. I put one too many decimals. But so this is how this actually stores a value. Now, what do all these values mean? Well, let's put in a value of minus one just so we can see this. So minus one, that means all these values are now one. And if we put zero, they're gonna all be zeros. Now, the bits you need to be, or the two values you need to know about is one is if we put a one in bit 15, that's gonna give us actually our maximum negative number. So this integer can go from negative 32,768, and actually, just so I don't have to click a bunch of ones, it can go to 32,767. And if you notice, those are all ones now except for that last one. But so my, so my int can store a number from negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. And my bool can only store a one or a zero. Okay, Daryl, I know, I know we were emailed even a little bit before. Does that kind of help clear up the bool versus the dent? Or mainly, yeah, I think, and I think the stumbling block for everybody is realizing that B3 is not a Boolean value. B3 is an integer. B3 colon zero slash zero, that's a Boolean value. So, I mean, in here, let's just throw some things in here to make this easier. Um, let's say this was our run. And may, uh, maybe this is, I don't know, pause, just something I haven't used. So typically in RS Logix 500, we need our descriptions and that's how we would track what these are. But, in Studio 5000, I would never make my int and make dot one, the run, and zero, the pause. I would come over here and 
I would make a run tag. And since that's only a one or a zero or a bit, then I would make it a bull. And then same with the paws. It would be a bull. That way we have these tags that we'll be tracking when we're running and when we're pausing or whatever we're tracking. Okay, there. Good. That got to. Let's see. Let me catch up a little bit on Ted. Yeah, throw some questions in here. I'll see where this goes from here. Um, I know. Oh, and <laughs> okay, let's see. I would normally no. I mean, Andrew, and yeah, here's where you know everybody has their different ways of programming. But you know, from a troubleshooting standpoint, I absolutely would not map my inputs and outputs like that. That really um, it adds a layer of really kind of pain. <laughs> that's a, yeah, but that's an opinion. Um, and I don't get into function block versus ladder because, you know, we have a PLC quiz series going on right now. And in that, that's one of my challenges is that I'm um, I'm programming in all three. Each quiz, I have, um, well, I have switch four. I got to flip around right now. But yeah, switch four to the left, I program it in ladder. The middle, it's function block. And the right, is structured text. And there's kind of my one versus the other. Well, let's do it in all. Because what I find most of the time is people don't like what they don't understand as much as anything. I mean, really, I think in the end, we found that um, at least most programs seem to run about the same in any of them. Let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, well, you know, one, um, what other questions do we have then? Because really, we've covered the communication. This is supposed to be the basics. So we've covered communicating over USB, RS-230, I mean, USB, serial, and um, what was the other one, Amber? Ethernet, <laughs> the one that we're actually using. And we've talked about the differences between factory talk links. Oops, where's my thing? Come on now. Oh, why does my computer want to glitch out now? Must be tired. But yeah, we talked about the difference between factory talk links and RS links. Yeah, any more questions on that? I know some of you came in later, but yeah. For the most part, if you are doing Ethernet or USB, Use the new factory talk links. If you are doing serial or any of the other ones, then use RS links. Besides the fact, yeah, apparently factory talk links takes longer to boot up because we're still booting on that. There we go. Anybody, if they have any questions after the chat, they are more than welcome to email us. Yeah, absolutely. You can throw them down in the comments. You can go to twcontrols.com um and ask any questions that come up after this and yeah we'll probably make this live stream available later because it didn't go it definitely didn't go as bad as the one with the power outage that was very um <laughs> that was very eventful but yeah so yeah in back to factory talk links because this is a new one and honestly this is one i'm trying to really start to use and come to grips and find all the little things about is if you're doing ethernet or you're doing usb Use factory talk links. If you're using mainly just this DF1, in fact, let me go ahead before I forget, let me delete out my Ethernet IP. Yeah, if you're doing serial or, actually, let me go back there. If you're doing serial or if you're doing any of these other protocols, then you probably still need to use RS links. Let's see. Yeah. Show us how some of the instructions work like a move. Do you mean like the move instruction, the MOV? Is that what you're talking about? Um, well, okay, we have my int now, and we can create. Well, one, just so we can learn a little bit about you can do different values of different ones. Let's go ahead and create my dim. We didn't talk about that. This is really the default data type of Studio 5000. In fact, you see when I start clicking, I mean, when I start typing, it comes up with a dent here. So this is the default. And then, yeah, uh, we can go over here. Um, what were we doing here? Oh, we don't need that anymore. And let's just bring down a move instruction. And so we haven't talked. There are categories up here for the different types. So that's timer counter and everything. And there is a problem. I hope somebody can show me in chat. If you notice when I started clicking there, did you see that these had their descriptions completely out? And when I click on one of them, it truncates them. Because I was getting ready to say the move one would be on the move logical. 
And as I was saying that, it went to this whole move slash L dot dot dot. So I got to figure that happened in our last upgrade. I got to figure out what happened there. But yeah, so we're going to bring down a move instruction. And we'll delete that out. And yeah, so just to show that we can move between different data types, I'm going to move my int, which has a 32767, to my dent which right now has zero. But notice this, if I mouse over it, you can learn a lot. The data type of this one is int. The data type of this one is dent or double integer. So this has twice the number of bits in it. This is a 32-bit number. This is a 16-bit number. Okay, and just so we can go over again, I'm not gonna use the finalize all button. So we're gonna hit the accept button and that's gonna send it to the PLC. And like I always say to everybody, if it's lowercase, it's not a big deal, but when it gets capitalized, like your boss, you know, when you get something capital, it usually means he means some serious business. So we hit that, it's capitalized now. And then we're gonna go over here, we're gonna test. And when we test, we're gonna see these green bars come down it. And also you'll see that value went to 32,767 now. And then, like I said, when you're done testing, either take your edit out or go ahead and finalize it. I mean, assemble it. So we'll have that. But okay, so now we've moved this value to this value. Now I can I can change this one to a six. That one's going to change to six, whatever it is. But you know, it's worth taking a moment to look into these bits, especially when we're at thirty-two seven sixty-seven. So I'm going to go over here. And we're going to open up, whoops, go to monitor tag, that out of the way. And we're going to open up my dent. And we can see we got a bunch of ones there. And if we scroll on down here, you see all of them are zero, but we have ones from 14 through zero. Now I'm going to open up my int. And same deal we have numbers from one through 14. So it's doing the exact, it's putting the exact same numbers in here to get the exact same number in the end result here. Now, no, we're not going binary on this, but, <laughs> but yeah, so does that answer your question there? Is that kind of show you how a move, um, a move instruction works to move data from one place to another? Click here for our free Allen Bradley PLC lessons. Till next time.